Hey there, Courageous Leader. Looking for a place to connect, share, and collaborate with other ambitious, impact-driven powerhouses? Well, look no further. Join me and dozens of other bold, action-oriented women in leadership in the Lead Hers Lounge. The Lead Hers Lounge is a no-cost monthly meetup for listeners of the show and my broader She Leads community so that we can come together and uncover opportunities to collaborate with each other and magnify our impact. We meet monthly on the fourth Wednesday of every month. Details to save your spot for the next no-cost meetup is in the show notes below, or you can head over to sabinegideon.com forward slash lounge to register. Again, that's sabinegideon.com forward slash lounge to register and save your spot. I'll see you in the lounge. Thank you for joining me on another episode of She Leads Now podcast, where we help career and entrepreneurial women gain the tools to develop a success mindset, create winning strategies, build collaborative relationships, and take bold action towards creating impact and fulfillment in their lives and careers. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and I'm on a mission to awaken and activate women and emerging leaders so they can tap into their innate leadership ability elevate their influence, and create the impact they were destined to make. If you're ready to up-level your confidence, courage, and influence, you've come to the right place. Join me weekly for insights, strategies, and resources to help you grow, develop, and embody the leader you were meant to be so that you can make the impact you know you are called to make and establish the legacy you've always dreamed. The world eagerly awaits the emergence of your brilliance, impact, and influence. So with that, let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome to another episode of the She Leads Now podcast. Joining me today is Tisha Pelletier. She is a personal brand builder. And today we're going to talk about how to leverage your brand to increase your impact and your income. Tisha, I am so excited to have you on the show today. Uh, Without further ado, please tell us a little bit about your background, about what you do today and how you help entrepreneurs and others really build their personal brand? Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm excited about this opportunity. And really, you know, I've been an entrepreneur since 2004. So I've had, I've had five different businesses. I'm on my fifth and final. And I will tell you that when I talk about branding, it really is the secret sauce. I wish I would have known that years ago when I started Instead of finding out later on that, oh my gosh, had I just been building that, it would have opened up so many more opportunities. And so what I do now with clients, I mainly work with solopreneurs who are in very saturated industries. So think of coaches and realtors and mortgage loan officers. And, you know, if you are an independent contractor of some sort, you're still building a business. And you know this, people are going to you because of you. They're going to you because of your personality and how they work well with you. And that really is your brand shining through. But what people aren't realizing is that if they don't have any brand presence, if they don't have any digital footprints out there, it really makes it very difficult for people to research you, figure out who you are, and then take that next step. So that's what I help people with. You mentioned personal brand builder. So I feel like that's a different term than strategist because I love being able to work directly with that person and build that foundation together, providing all of the assets that they need to build a very strong standout personal brand. I'm curious as well, because uh, some of my listeners, they are in traditional uh, corporate environments at various levels of their organization. And then I also have like the entrepreneurs, the solopreneurs, and you know the, the ones yeah. building empires. And so I think it's important to highlight the piece around personal brand building and what that really looks like. Because I think some people bucket it into, you know, the pretty colors and the logo and, you know, the the pretty uh, grids on Instagram. But what specifically is a personal brand? Like, what are the ingredients or the components that make an effective personal brand? Sure. I'm so glad that you asked that because I come up with my list of seven P's and that makes it super simple to be able to explain to people what elements go into building a personal brand. And like you said, it can be 
logo, colors, photos, things like that, but that's not your brand. What I really look at is your brand is how do people perceive you? What's that reputation say about you? It's like that whole, you know, that quote from Jeff Bezos, your reputation is what people say when you're not in the room. How do you want to be known? Right. And, and so a lot of that first comes with self-discovery. And I find that not just an entrepreneur, but corporate student, college student, like we haven't done the hard work first. I feel like this is where that self-discovery comes in, where you get to figure out what lights you up. What is my purpose? Why do I do the things the way I do? You know, um, what am I excited about? What's the legacy that I want to leave behind? What does my personality say about me? So I find that we are missing that element. And so when we get to just posting things on social media, we're very lost and people can't figure out why well, you're kind of like this, but then you're like this. And then when I meet you, are you the same person? So I'm really trying to combine all those elements together so that you are memorable and you are standing out in a crowd. So when we talk about the seven P's, literally just created this, like I was laying in bed and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Cause I love alliterations. I love making it very simple for people to grasp the concept. And so this is more talking to an entrepreneur type, but the seven P's that I put out there are the first, and just think about like, we're laying the foundation of a house. You've got to start at the bottom. There's, we can't put a roof on anything. If we don't have the foundation. The first thing I walk people through is really in defining what your purpose is. Why do you do the things that you do? Why do you love those things that you do? What, what do you gravitate towards? And then the next part is pillars. We always want to talk about the core values. So pillars is just, you know, it's the infrastructure of what your house is built on. So for me, authenticity, integrity, energy, those are big things for me. And you'll see that come out a lot in, in the types of things that I post. Um, and then the next one is passions. And so the biggest mistake I see people make is they try to always talk about their profession always about their profession, always about what they do instead of who they are and what excites them. So your passions really are the key to connecting with people. Like it's the funniest story. I have pugs, I have two pugs and a boxer. And as soon as I talk about my pugs, people are like, I have pugs. I love pugs. I want to talk about pugs. And, and then it's this open conversation that then leads to something bigger because we already have something very much in common that we love. So passions is the next P we talk about personality of what is your personality like? Are you high energy bubbly? Are you more subdued? Very like, you know, or just low key. Like, what does that say about you? Because you're going to attract, this is all about attraction marketing. Like you're going to attract the people that want that kind of vibe in their life. Right. I'm not everyone's cup of tea <laughs> and I've, I've totally realized that. And that's a okay with me because I'm not trying to attract everybody and trying to attract the right types of people. Um, and then we get into your, uh, the people, the people and prospects. So P people, prospects, the people that you really want to surround yourself with. So trying to build up that tribe and, and then the next P is products, products and programs. So again, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're trying to create something, what does that look like? How are you serving the people that you want to be around? And the very last P is presence. So now, now comes the implementation. Now comes the strategy of putting into action. Like, where do you show up? Are you on social media and what platforms are you on? Are you a video person or are you more of a writing, you know, copywriting kind of person? Like what, what elements do you want to use to start attracting people to come to you that are like, you're so on point. I love your brand. What's next? Mm -hmm. I love that. And if you are listening and you didn't grab a piece of uh, paper and a pen to write down, because Tisha just dropped some bombs there. Uh, so be sure to rewind, go back and review these seven P's because uh, they are extremely foundational. While Tisha does work with entrepreneurs, there are pieces in there, regardless of what field that you're in, that you can take away from that. And so what I've heard underneath uh, all of that, like the essence of all of that is really getting at the core of who you are, your identity. It's almost like mm -hmm. you can't really brand yourself out there if you yourself aren't clear on who you are and what matters to you and your values and your passion and your purpose. Um, so mm -hmm. I love that the focus is less about the aesthetics and the mm -hmm. external things, right, that are fleeting, as we know, but right. it's getting to the root of 
who are you as an individual? What is your secret sauce? I, I like to call it your unique brilliance. What mm-hmm. is your unique brilliance? And how is that showing up uh, in the world? So thank you for sharing those seven sure. keys with us. Again, go back, listen to those, uh, write them down and start to really think through, you know, what do those seven P's look like for you? <laughs> Tisha is the queen of alliterations, you know, between her Tisha talks and her convos in the Camry. And I think you have a Lexus one too. I do. Um, so Congo and my Camry upgraded uh, last year to lessons in my Lexus. And so you already know exactly what you're getting into when you watch it. It's a lesson and I'm in my car. <laughs> and they're, you know, they're small tidbits of, of advice. And, and what I love about Tisha is she actually walks the walk, right? So mm-hmm. when you go to her social media, which we will definitely include in the show notes bef- below, you know, it's very much real, authentic. She is who she is on and off camera. And it's the, it's the humanization of like, hey, this is what it means to be an entrepreneur. This is what this is what it means to be a mom. This is what it looks like to be a woman of faith. And mm-hmm. her, she lives her brand. And right. so I really love the authenticity that you bring forward in, in the work that you do as well. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. a woman that uh, follows me on LinkedIn. She's going to be on an upcoming Tisha Talks, but she shared, not even on one of my posts, but on another post that she's like, Tisha Marie Pelletier is someone that is always authentic and genuine. And so when you look at that, when someone else is talking about that and they're referring to you, that's when you know your brand is on point. That's when you know that, wow, I am really living my truth and living my brand. Other people see it. That's what I intended to put out there and people are noticing it. So that's what I'm saying. If you were, if you want to be known as authentic and genuine, but when you get out there, you're not walking the talk, people see right through it. And you're just playing games and then it's, it's, it's a distrust. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. So this is, this is time number five for you in this entrepreneurial space, right? So <laughs> you've been a five-time entrepreneur. What do you think have been some of the key decisions or the key factors in helping you to, you know, really succeed and advance from what you've been doing in each single business to what you do today? Sure. You know, I think with all of the businesses that I've had, I've always taken bits and pieces of things that I really love. And I put the things that I don't ever want to do ever again in the closet. I think it's so important that we know as as solopreneurs, as entrepreneurs, as just, as just individuals that we're allowed to pivot. We don't need permission. We don't need someone to say, you don't want to do it. Don't do it. I'm going to give you that permission. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Because I would much rather have a quality of life that I love and be doing the things that I love so that I'm not overwhelmed, stressed, missing out on moments. You know, I don't want that in my life. I want to be very present in everything. So, and I've learned that through the years, the hard way. Absolutely. But, you know, taking, taking the skills, like we all have such collective skills that we have received over the years that we've learned through the years. And That really has helped me so much, even in this next chapter of my life and this journey of figuring out again, what I like to do and how I can bring those skills back to the table. So I mentioned my first business was a marketing company and I had that for about, oh my goodness, probably about 16 years. (laughs) And while I don't have it anymore, I love certain elements of it. I love the creative process. I loved being able to work with my clients and seeing their eyes light up. And now I get to do that in even the personal brand building. So in a way, it's like I'm running an ad agency for an individual, you know, and building up their brand and boosting their confidence and creating their business with them. So it's exciting. It's exciting work. But I would say that's that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned just throughout my years is that believe in yourself because no one else will believe in you if you don't. Right. And that comes back to confidence always be investing in yourself. Always. There's always room to grow and learn and improve. And, and yeah, don't, don't leave all those skills behind. Like that could be your next big thing. I was given the book, the obstacle is the way. And I just love the title of that book because I think so many of us can go, Oh, I was so frustrated about this one thing. And it was my biggest hurdle and my biggest obstacle. And now I'm doing that for a living. (laughs) Like I don't know if I mentioned, but I didn't want to build a personal brand. I honestly didn't. I really like drug my feet and my business coach was like, I think you should do this. I think it'd be good for you. And I 
I took several months to really think about and ponder the idea. And I was like, what do I have to lose? I don't have any other ideas. And so I went that direction. And now I do this for a living. (laughs) (laughs) Helping uh, uh, dozens of others like step into this place. That's amazing. Um, Want to shift gears a little here uh, and, and get a little deeper into leadership and, and how you mm-hmm. define that and what that looks like for you. And so as you think about, you know, being an entrepreneur for so long and running your business with a team and as a solopreneur, how would you define your leadership philosophy or maybe even your leadership style? My leadership style is very team focused, honestly. And I feel that when people ask, like if you, what makes a good leader? And I feel that a great leader is someone that, that listens to others, that encourages and invites them into the conversation, that realizes that, you know, I'm not the end all be all, that other people have ideas to contribute and listening and taking those in. I saw this in my, my children's school one day when I was walking and it said, you know, a boss has the title, a leader has the people. And I've always loved that. I've always loved that because I'm like, that's exactly it. I'm not getting on a soapbox and saying, everybody listen to me. Like I'm getting up and saying, Hey, I will lead us, but I want you to contribute to this next thing, this next movement, this next chapter, whatever it is that we're doing, because I really value the people that I'm working with. And I feel like that really is what makes a great leader. Like, I feel like that has to be first and foremost in any leadership quality. Absolutely. So I, I love it. So what I heard is you you have a very collaborative style. And I love the fact that the focus, to your point, is not about the role. It's not about the title, but it's really about how are you able to, you know, get people together co- to collaborate, to influence them, to actually drive through a mission. Um, and I think that that's, that's super important. And I preach it all the time. I, I won't do it on this episode, but that, you know, <laughs> leadership is is not respective of, of a title or role or position or a particular level, um, that it's how we show up. It's, it's really innately who we are. And talking about personal branding demonstrates that leadership. So, so I, I love your philosophy. A question that I have for you is, you know, as we're moving through this very um, unstable, uncertain environment externally, right, there's a lot of considerations for leaders, whether they're in their businesses or whether they're in their organizations. Um, what advice have have you gained uh, through the last couple of years or have you given your clients in terms of being able to effectively lead through these challenging and uncertain times that we're in? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think with, with clients, I, I really feel like a lot of it stems back to communication and communication style and being able to effectively communicate. I mean, I remember um, I was asked from my own university if I would come in and teach teach students how to be people. And that just that just like rocked my world upside down a little. I'm like, what excuse me? Like, what do you want me to do? And they said, We just want you to teach them people skills. So I feel that the world is changing so much and that we don't know how to have a conversation. We don't know how to just smile at the person walking up next to us and you know say hi to them. Like, it's just, we're so disconnected, even, isn't it funny? Like we're so connected, disconnected. So that's one thing that I would encourage people to do is, is really hone in on those people skills. Like that will make much better leadership skills. It'll make you a much better business owner. Um, one thing that I, that I got into just this last year was, uh, was something called bank. Have you heard of bank? I have not. So bank, I love the thinking behind this because bank basically is a um, acronym and it stands for blueprint, action, knowledge, nurture. And what it is, is the owner, uh, Sherry Tree, she created this whole system of the values and how you, how you value your values. What's the importance of the values? And it basically is like, we're not all the same type of people and you can't give the same presentation to you or to me or whatever, if we're really not wired the same way, you know, I'm going to receive information differently than you will. And so like, for me, I'm a very high nurture. So I'm a very high N followed by a B, which is blueprint, which is someone who's very detailed, very just like, 
da, 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 da. Like, so it's just learning how to communicate better. And so her thing is, if you walk into a room and nobody else there speaks English and you just start speaking English, are they really going to understand you? <laughs> so it's like talking different languages and being able to, you know, move into this if you see that they gravitate more toward detail or are they more knowledge? So maybe they need more facts, figures, data, you know, in order to make a decision or are they nurture, which is like, oh, how's your family? How's your kids? Like, tell me about you. Like they, they're more like me, like they're more the type that wants to build that long lasting relationship. And so I would say that I would say that to the leaders today, to the leaders of tomorrow, We really need to do a better job of communication. And that really does solve a lot of the problems moving forward, whether you are leading a team or you're working in an environment or you're a business owner communicating with your clients and teams and contractors and so on. That's a really good key point, and especially in the world that we live in today where, you know, technology is is really a barrier, if you will, to that human touch in that relationship. And then you have this situation where so many of us are remote and, you know, like the opportunities to be with other people are few and far between. I think even more so than ever, like we need to practice those communication skills. And to your point, not just talking to people the way that we want to be talked to, but really taking that time to understand what is their quote unquote love language, right? Yes. Like how do they receive information? Um, and that takes work, that takes effort, that takes energy, and that takes intentionality. Uh, but uh-huh. you see it in the industry with uh, with leaders who are taking that additional step, who are doing that additional work, like their organizations are thriving in mm-hmm. spite of the external factors. Uh, so yes, I totally agree with you, uh, developing and honing in on the communication skills in a Mm -hmm. way that allows you to meet people where they are is Mm -hmm. a key and critical point. So a couple last questions, you know, when you think about networking, right, like so much of from an entrepreneurial perspective, from just being able to advance in any capacity requires you to have a strong network and a strong support system. As you think back over the course of your career, What role has networking played in you being able to, you know, build these businesses and and make these shifts um, and then also be able to effectively support your clients? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I created my own networking event here. I like to call it the anti-networking event because I think that we're ingrained to think that when we go to a networking event, it's stuffy. It's a lot of business card passing. It's a 30 second commercial, like a lot of the agenda, or you have to give a referral. And I really wanted to change the stigma of no, no networking is really can happen anywhere. It doesn't have to happen at a business event. It can really happen anywhere. If you're open to creating a conversation, a new connection, And as far as networking, I mean, when I started in business, I was like, oh my goodness, I do need to get out and network. And so I was always out at networking, the networking events I didn't like, right? But but I have seen that you really do need to invest in networking. You really do, because you have no idea where your next opportunity is going to come from. And like I said, if you're, if you're looking at it from that personal brand standpoint, if you were showing up being you, you don't have an agenda, you're really there to serve, you're really there to just get to know people, then that can come back to you so many more ways that can create lifetime clients for you. You know, so I would say that if people want to get into a business and they're like, I'm kind of hands off networking, then you're really missing a big opportunity. And now because of COVID and because a lot of in-person events have been canceled, a lot of us had to go to online networking and online networking doesn't mean you have to be in a room, a breakout room with 500 people trying to have a conversation. This is networking. A one-on-one coffee online is networking, you know, and I feel that, you know, being able to post some things, for instance, on LinkedIn, which is where I, I hang out most, that if someone comments, it means that there was an interest in what I posted. So to me, that's a form of networking to go back in and start the conversation with that person to further the relationship with that person. And that person then becomes part of my network. Yeah. So they're, they're invested. I'm invested. We're seeing how we can collaborate and work with each other. So it's huge. It's huge. I definitely recommend that people continue and keep going with it. 
Absolutely. And and Tisha and I met through networking, through yeah. a mutual connection. And, and here we are months later having this conversation. And I will say too that, you know, uh, Tisha embodies the power of networking. So we were actually just talking about this before we came on. Um, but Tisha supports this, uh, this organization in Uganda and they really needed support. And so what did she do? She reached out to her network um, and through reaching out to her network, she was able to raise initially $500 for this school so that they can support the kids and getting just the basic necessities and more donations are coming in. So that is the power of networking, right? It, it doesn't necessarily have to result in something personally for you, but the fact that you are able to be a vessel and, you know, support someone else in their mission. So uh, perfect example, perfect timing on that one. <laughs> um, you've given us a book recommendation. I have definitely going to add the obstacle is the way on there. I'm just curious if you would share with the audience how they can get in touch with you. Where can they reach you? What are your social handles? Sure, sure. Well, like, as I mentioned, LinkedIn is the definitely the platform to find me on. I post there pretty much daily. Um, I do take weekends off. <laughs> but LinkedIn, um, just my name, Tisha Marie Pelletier. So my middle name's thrown in there. I am on Instagram, but not as much. Um, I launched a TikTok channel, but I'm not on there as much either, but you, you're welcome to find me at just again, my name, Tisha Marie Pelletier on Instagram at Tisha M Pelletier or Tisha Marie official. And then as for my website, if someone is interested in personal branding, I'd recommend them check out tishamarie.com. And then if you're just interested in, Hey, I just want to know who this girl is. Tisha Marie enterprises.com is another site. That's like my full fledged site. Like that has a lot. <laughs> a lot of blogs that I've written, a lot of videos that I've done. You can also catch some of the Tisha Talks lives that I've done with uh, with guests. I remember a friend of mine saying, it's like you walked out of your website. And I said, yeah, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Tisha, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I will definitely include all of your social handles, your websites in the show notes. Uh, please connect with Tisha on LinkedIn. She is extremely personable and approachable and just a, a huge supporter of people advancing. So connect with her, let her know you heard her on the show. Um, and if you need some services or need some support and really trying to get to the root of, of who you are, that identity, and want to work through those uh, seven Ps, reach out to Tisha. Um, again, Tisha, thank you so much for coming on today. I really sincerely appreciate it and love this conversation. And I look forward to reading uh, The Obstacle is the Way I've Heard About It. And I think it's in one of my like wish lists somewhere. So thank you for bringing that back up. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. I love our time together. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for uh, tuning in. We will be back next week with another episode of the She Leads Now podcast. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of She Leads Now. Be sure to join us next week for another transformative discussion to help you grow, develop, and embody the courageous leader you've always been. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get alerts when new episodes drop and join us for our next Leaders Lounge meetup on Zoom. Details and dates for future sessions are included in the show notes below. So take a look there or head over to sabinegideon.com forward slash lounge to register and hold your spot for the next session. Again, that's sabinegideon.com forward slash lounge to grab your spot. Excited to connect with you all inside the lounge. Talk to you soon.